You're listening to Evergreen Media Network. I am Cindy Schwartz, and this is the Patient Partner Show. We are talking about healthcare issues. Jeannie Roller and I. Jeannie Roller is my co-host out of Indiana. I'm in Florida. Today, Jeannie, the topic is how medical professionals, actually doctors, get poor health care their own self when they are in the medical system, which is kind of amazing. But you know what? When the medical people become patients, medical doctors become patients, that's exactly what they are. And I guess they are, sadly, sadly for all of us and certainly for doctors that, you know, try to help people when they're in the system themselves, are getting poor care. So I I talked before we went on air about a book that I read quite a few years ago about a Stanford doctor, a Stanford surgeon, you know, it's a world-class surgeon by all accounts, that got really, really poor care and diagnosis for his own lung cancer, and he wound up dying of it, which is sad. And also, um, there was a movie made, and I'm not going to remember the name. I didn't, I didn't look it up before we went on air, about a doctor. It's a pretty well-known movie about how that doctor got really poor care. So, I mean, the, these stories are out there. They're valid. It's a shame that they're true, but they're there. So, what, you know, what are your thoughts on all of this, Jeannie? Well, there was an article recently by the Insider about a doctor um, who was an ICU doctor out in California, and he uh, was diagnosed with liver cancer, and it was fairly serious, a fairly aggressive type of cancer, and one that needed a liver transplant. Um, But the hospital said that he was too sick to get a transplant and they wouldn't do it. So the hospital in California said this. Right, right. And so his wife became his advocate. So they went to New Orleans. She found a hospital in New Orleans that actually did the liver transplant. And what struck me about this article was, here's what he said. Being a patient made me a better doctor. As a doctor, I'm used to being in control. As a patient, I had very little control. I lost my independence and felt vulnerable. Sometimes laying in a hospital bed with even my clothes taken away, I had no dignity. Mm -hmm. So he said the experience made him a more compassionate doctor. Um, You know, I, I, I think a lot of times that's true. It's like the lady who was a nurse who probably had experienced patients having unconsented for pelvic rectal exams. You know, she knew it happened, mm-hmm. but in, but then it happened to her and it just, you know, turned her world upside down because it actually did happen to her. Yeah. And then she started, you know, fighting for it. Also, there's a doctor, I'm on the patient um, bioethics board, patient dignity, and Dr. Bernstein is the moderator of the board. And he is a retired doctor. He's in his early 90s. And he remembers uh, one of his ER trips where he went from ER to a patient room. Mm -hmm. He said that before he could, you know, say or do anything. And and by the way, he said the nurses knew he was a retired physician. Okay. Um, One of them opened the back of his gown and took a picture of his of his butt and his back for bed sore checks. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he didn't, he wasn't asked. He didn't have time to respond. They just did it. You know, later on, he knew that they did it for, you know, legal reasons because bed sores. But at the time, you know, he wasn't asked permission. So, I mean, it happens even to medical people and, they get caught kind of like we've talked about the deer in the headlight thing mm-hmm. where, you know, you know, it shouldn't be happening, but you're, you're either caught by surprise. You're afraid to say something, whatever. And so it, it also happens to them. Now, you know, the question is with him, he didn't have time to ask him why right. he didn't have time to ask them, is this your cell phone, mm-hmm. your private cell phone, or is this the hospital's? bone so it 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 does happen and patients aren't the only ones and you know it it does cindy kind of kind of 
you know, make clear that what we've been talking about is happening and it does happen. Right. It happens to them. Yeah, it does. It happens. Well, it happens to everybody because at that point you're stripped of all titles and whatever, and you're just in the mix as a patient. And another thing that comes to mind, you know, my own personal experiences being in a hospital is when one of the uh, staff, nursing staff will walk in with that little souffle, uh, white paper souffle cup or whatever with the pills or medicines in it. And they just hand you the water and the thing, go ahead and take all these pills. Well, you know what? I'm a little bit reticent sometimes because I I've been given many drugs that I have reactions to that were on my chart, but for some reason was disregarded. So I'm kind of uh, hesitant about doing that as well. And they don't explain what it is. Here you go. Here's your meds at 6 p.m. or whatever it is. And they hand you the cup. Here's the cup of water. Go ahead and take those. And I'm like, but what is it, though? And then a lot of times, oftentimes... They get mad if you, it's like you're challenging them or whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm just trying to look out for myself because it has happened to me more, way more than one time. So I'm kind of scared. I'm leery. So it's amazing that you well, say yeah, that, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the other part of that, Cindy, is that they just hand you a cup of pills. And if you're supposed to have a painkiller and you have a nurse who maybe has an addiction issue, you don't know for sure you've gotten your painkiller. Yeah. And uh, then if you call and say, I'm in pain, then you're labeled as the, the drug addict because you're wanting pain medicine. Yeah. Well, you already had that according to the chart. According to so, the chart. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often, but it, it does happen. Yeah. But I, I'm hilarious yeah, of some does. of these things. And it is sad that a doctor has to have with all the training and everything they have to be uh, confronted with the same kind of poor care, same kind of poor system that we are as the patients. It shouldn't be happening to anyone. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it really struck me when he said that he laid there without his clothes and without his dignity mm-hmm. because that that is how so many patients feel. They They feel that everything has been stripped away, which, you know, in my opinion, is what those hospital gowns are for mainly for it to make everyone wearing them the same. You're not special. Well, my question nowadays is, is, and call me archaic or whatever, you know, adjective or whatever you want to use, descriptive word you want to use, is back in the day when you went to the doctor, it was it was routine that every time you went to an office visit, you were in a gown. And nowadays mm-hmm. that doesn't happen. You go into the doctor and you're there in your street clothes. And if you have to have like a certain, if it's your yearly exam for a woman, a lot of times they'll give you a breast exam or something like, you know, that kind of thing and blah, 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 which is the only time usually that you have to have a paper, some kind of paper gown or covering or whatever. Other than that, you're usually sitting there. If you're there with a cold or strap or, you know, whatever you want to say, you're there in your street clothes. So I don't understand why... So that went away by the wayside. Someone figured out that you didn't have to be stripped naked and put in a gown every time that you went to a routine visit. I don't understand why in this day and age, and we should do some research on this, Jeannie, that that hasn't gone by the wayside with these archaic hospital gowns that now everyone is forced to wear. I'm not saying that we should be in our street clothes because germs, I get that when you're actually in the hospital. I get that kind of, you know, that kind of uh, viewpoint. But it, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. That those gowns yeah, really, yeah, no longer are suffice in 2024 while we're sitting here talking about this, that there could be other ways to be presented as a patient and have act and, and ha- medical staff have access the uh, the access that they um, say that they need the undivided access if you will my my opinion my words Jeannie but it's sad the couple of seconds that we have left it's sad that a doctor has to experience that but hopefully they take the experience and with all the clout and power that they do wield change it for the rest of us that's what my hope is yeah. You know what I mean? On that thought, I'm going to say stay listening to Evergreen Media Network. And this is also on a podcast on Spreaker. So look us up on that. It is Patient Partner. So look us up. 